What's up, Abe Kislevitz here. We're skiing at Mammoth Mountain today. I got Zadia here with me. And I figured we'd do a little Q&A today. I posted a Q&A on my Instagram story yesterday. If you don't follow me over there, it's at Abe Kislevitz. Just wanted to get some questions in, some general Q&A that I could have some stories about or that I might have some insight that you guys wanted to know. Um, and I figured we'd do a little bit different. So I'm gonna mount up a POV camera and I'm gonna pick one question each chairlift and I will try to answer it as I go down. I can't guarantee anything amazing. Hasn't snowed in quite a while, so we're gonna do a little bit of park this morning, but yeah, thanks for joining and I hope you guys enjoy. The first question here actually comes from four different people. At Rockmoobie, at Tendyboy, at Asagal17, and at Mason.Vanderberg, how did you get started at GoPro? Great question and I'll get you guys on the way down. Zadia's third time on skis. She's crushing it. We just went to the thrift shop and found her a whole boot ski binding setup. <laughs> Look at her go. Oh, it's a little windy out here, so hopefully the audio is not terrible. I apologize. When I was in college at USC, I was studying engineering and I was on the USC ski and snowboard team. I helped run it. And I was skiing this very park pretty much every single weekend. Let's pause for a second and get through a majority of the story. I really got into filming, but the only camera that I could afford was a little point and shoot um, Canon Digital Elf I had really bad video. And I just started filming every weekend. One day, one of the guys on our team went to a trade show and GoPro had given them two cameras. They were original, before the HD, the original GoPro Hero cameras that took uh, AAA batteries. I was so stoked that a company believed in us enough to give us a free camera. I thought that was just insane. But that was right around when I started my YouTube channel. And I was just posting uh, USC Ski Team videos of the week. They're still up there if you want to check them out. And it was just me going around filming my friends. Woo. Ah. But I was actually really excited with the GoPro cameras because I was... Oh. <laughs> I was able to mount it on my head and not really be the film bitch. And when Chris and Caleb got to USC, they're two years younger than I am, they were really good at skiing and I was just so excited to film them. And so there was one weekend that we just filmed as much as we could. I made a YouTube video, I put it on the YouTube channel and I also sent it to the GoPro crew. And I remember getting a message back and they were so excited, like nobody had, used a camera in that way. It was really small company back then, like 10 people or less. And so they were just really excited. And they asked what I was doing after college and I was still studying engineering and I wasn't really sure, but I kind of stayed in touch for the next couple months and I got a lot better at uh, filming and editing. And I, um, went up and helped them film for the original HD camera. It's called the HD Ski Movie. And I was just really excited to edit that video. And when I finally graduated, that was actually before when I was still in school, but when I finally graduated, um, I came up to Mammoth and lived up here in the ski team house for about five months and just skied every day. And in that time, I learned everything there was to know at that time about video editing and transcoding and computers couldn't handle H.264s and all this stuff. And I started learning about color correction and uh, I just got really into it. And it was probably the best six months of my life, five, six months. And afterwards, I still, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, but I just found myself super passionate in what I was doing there. And so... At the end of that ski season, um, I got a job offer from GoPro and they were like, you should come out to San Francisco. That's where GoPro was at the time. And I wasn't really sure because it was a super small startup. I had just spent four years of my life grinding away at USC, studying engineering, um, put myself through school, spent a lot of money. And so it was just, it wasn't really sure that GoPro was gonna be big, but I was really passionate about it. and. Uh, so I moved out to San Francisco 
and the rest is history. So yeah, I mean, when I started at GoPro, woo, <laughs> when I started at GoPro, there were about 20 people in the office and I have been there ever since. And it's been a crazy ride, but it's been really fun. And I really haven't found the, another place that seems desirable because the intersection of art, which I'm really passionate about and technology, um, it's just kind of the perfect fit for me. And then obviously action sports and being able to go outside and, and kind of use everything that I'm passionate about into one job. All right, we're gonna try to get through two questions on the rundown because I think they're gonna be pretty quick. Um, we have from JG Johns 864, who was your favorite skier or what was your favorite ski movie or edit? And then from Marco underscore Leza, aside from a GoPro, what other tool slash technology has changed your approach to videography? Good question. Okay, so the first question is, what is your favorite ski movie or who is your favorite skier? I don't know if anybody watching this is gonna really remember some of the OG ski movies. If you're really into freestyle skiing, like I was in high school, you maybe will. But a segment in a movie that really changed my perception on filming, and, and maybe <laughs> it's kind of obvious as, as to why, but there was a movie from Matchstick Productions called Seven Sunny Days, and there was a section with Ewan Olsen and TJ Schiller where they mounted a camera on their head. I think it might have even been a 16 millimeter camera but basically we're doing in-air follow cams at Mount Hood Meadows, which at the time, or when I was in high school, that was my home mountain. And seeing in-air follow cam shots as close as they were doing it was something that you'd never seen before. And I just remember thinking that was the coolest thing I had ever seen. Whoa. And I guess it's pretty obvious now but I'm sure that had a lot of inspiration for what I was doing in my life. I'm pretty rusty on the rails. I think just at the time, Ewan Olsen was so influential when I was in high school back in like 2003, 2005. Very early days of freestyle skiing and beyond that, obviously, Tom Wallish is just a legend in freestyle skiing and the stuff that he does and how smooth he is. Tom is one of my favorite skiers. Good question though. All right, let's see if we can have enough speed for this. So the second question is what technology other than GoPros have changed your, uh, changed. Oh, Wendy. <laughs> oh. Stabilization is a huge thing that has changed filmmaking for me. So, Originally, the introduction of gimbals was absolutely huge. And even before gimbals, we started playing with steady cams. I'm sure a lot of people remember glide cams. So glide cams is kind of the first hi <laughs> glide cams is kind of the first introduction of stabilization and so we were using like the glide cam HD 2000 with a GoPro. And then electronic gimbals came out. And then I think the next iteration obviously is, is mechanical and digital stabilization. But if you go back and look at kind of what I used to film, I always would film in slow motion because slow motion, you can slow it down and so your clips aren't as shaky. And with the introduction of stabilization, you're just able to film a lot more stuff in real time and 
you can show speed and energy and and you also obviously have just every everything you film is available to, for you to use whereas before we would film so much stuff but you would only pick the very smallest point in the video where it was stable and throw away everything else because it's too shaky and you i guess you don't really realize how important it is until you go back to something that doesn't have stabilization and try to utilize it and it's uh, a lot harder and you have to film in slow motion and pick little moments and that's that all right we're back chairlift confessionals um this next question is from hey it's arnie what's up dude and the question is how many cameras do you use for a normal outing that isn't a pro shoot and which ones good question all right i got two good questions they're kind of similar one is from big a jump or big a jump and the other is from Kyle A, 1996. And the first one is, how do you shoot a trip? Do you plan your plans or you just shoot and you'll see it editing? And the second one is, how do you get your shot list? Do you brainstorm about it? Both good questions about figuring out how and what to shoot when you're on a trip. Okay. First question. Wow, you got four poles. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're trying to switching up the angle a little bit let's see we got max lens mod on my head there goes zadia first question is how many cameras do i take on a normal day that's not a professional shoot um i would say usually I have a backpack on me when i'm skiing it's three cameras and skiing is the one activity where i probably have the most amount of gear just because i'm always trying to capture something different Wow, it's very loud. Oh, look at Zadia go. <laughs> but yeah, I usually have about three cameras, maybe one max, two other cameras, maybe one with max lens mod. Oh, look at these snowboarders going after it. Oh my gosh, that was fun. Okay, my turn. I'm not doing a flip, sorry. Um... Whoa, okay. So the next question, two kind of questions were about how frail, oh my gosh, huh. yikes. So the next question was uh, basically about how do you plan on what to shoot for a trip? In terms of actually, planning for trips that I'm going on and shooting trips that I'm going on. I think I think about things that feel very self-contained. So like when I come up to Mammoth, I can't film everything that I'm doing, obviously, that's just too much, but I can film uh, like an activity of, maybe we're going out ice skating and I think to myself, this is something specifically that I can capture that's gonna, that's gonna help encapsulate what the essence of this trip was. So you're gonna see the weather, you're gonna see the snow, we're gonna do a little road trip. Um, and that's easy to digest because it's kind of a small start and finish thing. And I would just think about things that you can do when you're on a trip that's like, oh, we're gonna go out snorkeling, let's film this as an activity. There's the idea. Um, or we're gonna go out skiing, but maybe you're just picking a small thing where you think about what you want to capture and it's like I want to capture the way there I want to capture the story oh uh, I don't know if we're gonna have enough speed for these hello wind oh big jump oh ho -ho. okay but uh that is not a cool trick. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Got a rail. But yeah, I guess the, the gist of it is when I'm traveling, I'm not filming everything. Um, and I'm figuring out ahead of time the things that I do want to film. Let's uh, get this angle back up here. Oh, the sun's coming out. But yeah, you're thinking about ahead of time what you do want to film and what the pieces to fully tell that story are. And a lot of times I just use 
a POV camera, so like I have a bite mount that I use a lot. And that's a camera you can just have in your pocket, pop in your mouth, and so you get those really dynamic two-handed POV shots that help tell the story of getting there, getting bags out, doing stuff. And then a second camera with maybe a tripod so you can get those third-person shots where you're setting the camera down and showing you getting out of the car and lacing up your ice skates and all that stuff. So, no brainstorming usually, but it happens passively in my mind. If I do brainstorm, I would expect the content to be a lot better. So it's just usually, I'm not really trying to try that hard, but when I am, it works out. Okay. Our last question of the day comes from a dear friend named Christopher Farrow. It's actually a good question, but do you ever feel stressed about the footage you have on hard drives that may or may not ever be turned into digestible content bits? So basically, you shoot a bunch of content, sits on hard drives, does that ever bother you? I think in the back of my mind, I always think eventually I will get to it. And even stuff I've shot 10 years ago, I still think about projects that I want to do with it. And uh, there's a lot of different aspects to filming with a GoPro, but um, a lot of it is I just kind of feel like I'm recording my memories. And whether it's in two years or five years or 10 years or 50 years, I can look back on all this stuff and it's just a more visual version of what I remember. So I think that aspect of shooting with a GoPro is really cool. So there's two parts, I think, to shooting and editing. And I get as much excitement out of just the process of shooting with a GoPro or just shooting in general content wise as I do on the editing side and putting together something that people can see. Um, but when I'm out in somewhere beautiful and I'm doing an activity that I love, whether it's skiing or surfing, um, I get as much enjoyment out of the activity as I do thinking about capturing really cool shots. And, and I don't, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to share it with somebody, but I think just the act of the artistry of capturing something gets me super excited. The way that I would think about it is kind of like if a painter was super passionate about making paint and maybe they made paint and then they painted the picture afterwards, but maybe they just made paint and they were really excited about the process of making paint and it sat in tubes for the rest of them, their lives. That's kind of what I'm doing with content where I'm shooting a bunch and maybe it sits on a hard drive and never gets seen, but I had a lot of fun and a lot of enjoyment capturing it and getting excited about the beauty of where I am and what I'm doing and maybe trying to push myself in an activity, whether it's like a GoPro thing or not. And then the other side of it is if I wanna use it in the future, I can. So thanks for joining the Q and A. If you uh, haven't subscribed, please do so. Go follow me on Instagram at Abe Kislevitz. I'm gonna post more of these Q and A's so you guys can ask some questions. But I hope this was enjoyable for you. My skiing wasn't awesome and we didn't do a whole lot, but it was fun for me. From Mammoth Mountain, we're out.